My name is Livid, and welcome back to Legacy Gaming. Salvaging is the hot new profession introduced in the 318 update, and today I wanted to bring you a complete chaptered guide into how it all works, from hull scraping in a reclaimer and vulture, all the way down to hull scraping and repairing by hand with the new SRT multi-tool attachment. I've spent a considerable amount of time in the PTU engaging with this loop and gathering the necessary footage and information to bring you the most comprehensive guide on this topic. So let's jump right into it. Now, when it comes to any profession in Star Citizen, you'll need the right tools for the job. So let's start with the ships. The first option you have is the Vulture, a brand new ship introduced in 318 and is your entry point into the salvage profession. It's a purely solo ship that has a comfortable living quarters, an internal salvage processing unit, and has a cargo bay capable of holding 12 SEUs of cargo. You can always stack more boxes off the cargo grid, up to 20 total, almost doubling your profits, but keep in mind that extra cargo won't be secured. Now, as with all ships in Star Citizen, new ships are only directly purchasable with real money as a primary form of development funding for the first two months that they get introduced. They will then become earnable with in-game currency at places like New Deal on Lorville. Now, because this ship operates so much like the Miss Prospector, I anticipate the Vulture to cost around 2 million AUEC. Now, if you want a detailed look at everything the Vulture has to offer, check out our comprehensive guide on that ship. The other ship that we have to talk about is the Reclaimer, which finally becomes operational with 318 and requires a bare minimum of three players, but ideally four to five, to operate at peak efficiency. This is because unlike the Vulture, where the pilot handles everything, the Reclaimer requires a pilot, two salvage beam operators, and an additional player in the cargo hold on the other side of the ship, sorting the large amount of RMC boxes that generates. While listed as having a cargo hold of 180 SEUs, it actually holds up to 300 SEUs, 25 times that of the Vulture. Now, a lot of players also seem to think the cargo grids aren't functional, but they are, just strangely placed in certain parts of each floor. So make sure not to give up too quickly when looking for a snapping point. In terms of cost, you can purchase a Reclaimer in-game at New Deal in Lorville on Hurston for roughly 15 million AUEC. Once the Reclaimer undergoes its gold standard rework, you'll be able to find the full review of the ship linked here as well. In terms of additional tools, every player engaging in salvage on the ship side of things will need a multi-tool with a tractor beam attachment, as you will be required to manually move the generator recycled material composite boxes from in front of the salvage processor to your cargo grid to continue salvaging. Now the Vulture can generate up to two boxes before needing to be moved manually, while the Reclaimer should allow up to three boxes per scraping arm, given that the processor runway is an extra container in length. Now, when we were working with the Reclaimer, it only let us generate two boxes like the Vulture, but it was clear that there were some collision issues causing problems. I'm hoping to see that fixed just because of how fast the Reclaimer seems to output boxes. If you are engaging in hand salvage or repair gameplay, then you'll need the Salvage Repair Tool Attachment, or SRT for short. Now, all of these tools can be found at major landing zones or cargo decks and refineries at Lagrange points via the respective kiosks. It's also important to note that the salvage processing unit on both the Vulture and Reclaimer, by default, will be able to create the Cambio SRT canisters from the RMC that you scrape for the multi-tool SRT attachment in order to engage in the repair loop. Additionally, as a temporary quality of life solution, you will also be able to craft multi-tools, tractor beams, and SRT attachments at this processing station as well. And it's our first in-game representation of the potential manufacturing gameplay loop. I'm personally hoping that the bench on the top floor of the Vulture becomes an RMC 3D printer in the future to replace this temporary solution. Now, right off the rip here, I've created a handy graphic illustrating the currently known spawns in each location related to the salvage gameplay loop. This is how it existed while testing in the PTU. If and likely when this information changes during the course of salvage development, I will make sure to have the correct updated image pinned in the comment section below. Now currently, you can find salvageable wrecks and materials in asteroid fields such as the Aeron Halo or the Yela Belt. You can also find salvage around any of the various Lagrange points in the Stanton system. Now this can range anywhere from smaller fractured ship panels all the way up to derelicts the size of 890 jumps. The derelict locations that you find on planets and moons often tied to missions can't be salvaged. Now just like the mining loop, you simply need to head to any of these salvage locations and utilize your ping system. Salvageable material will be indicated by this specific salvage icon seen here. You should also utilize your scanning tool, a default keybind of V, to scan the points that you detect before traveling to them, as these can either be wrecks or mineable asteroids. 
When using your scanner, you can immediately confirm if you found salvage, indicated by an RS value of 6,000 or more. The higher the number, the larger or more dense the wreck. It's also important to note that green, blue, yellow, and red outlines on wrecks in that order simply denote how much salvageable material remains on that ship's hull, with almost fully intact, high-density wrecks denoted in green, yielding the most amount of salvage. The outline color will change as you deplete more and more of the total scrapable material from each wreck. Now be warned, however, that when it comes to functional player ships, you can hull scrape them only when their shields are disabled, and this will result in you being charged with a crime stat. Now a good rule of thumb when landing anywhere is to only toggle off your engines, but leave your ship's power on to keep your shields up and avoid issues with rogue salvagers. Finally, we get to hull scraping itself, and it's important that we quickly go over the various ship-based controls right off the bat. Pressing M, just like mining, will deploy or retract your salvage arms. Pressing G will toggle your salvage arms from a fixed forward position where you have full maneuverability of your ship to a free gimbaled mode, keeping your ship from pitching or yawing, but allowing your scraper beams to target freely large areas of the ship. Pressing Alt and moving your scroll wheel will allow you to spread your beams apart, gathering material slower in multiple locations at once, or condense them back together, gathering material at a faster rate in a focused area. Pressing Alt and right mouse button will toggle between horizontal and vertical modes for when you spread or condense your scraper beams. Finally, right clicking will toggle between which scraper head you currently have active. Now, we aren't entirely sure if there will be different modules to swap out in the future, but given how mining heads are changeable, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being the case. In order to make sure you are being efficient when salvaging, understanding everything in the HUD is incredibly important. Beginning on the top of the side panels, we can see which scraper head is currently equipped and active. Each salvage head has distinct properties with advantages and disadvantages. These properties consist of things like diameter, or the area that is actively scraped with your beams, the speed, which is the rate at which your beam removes material from that location, and efficiency, which is how much material you actually scrape from each area. The closer to one, the less material goes to waste. Now the distance to target indicator is simply to show how close to a wreck you are and how far away you can be for your scrapers to still function. At the top of your HUD, you have three important additional indicators. The left side displays how close your salvage processor is to being full before it generates a box. Once the meter is completely filled, a box will be generated. If the output is blocked, you'll still be able to manually generate a box from the processor interface. It's also incredibly important to realize that while a box is being generated, any hull that you are scraping will not actually be processed, so it's advised that you pause salvaging while the box generates so as not to waste material. The right side displays how much material remains salvageable on the wreck as a whole. The middle is your extraction rate. It's important for gauging how quickly you're salvaging material. Now this is determined by the diameter of your scraper module, the percent of valid hull material being scraped, the speed you are scraping at, and the module's overall efficiency. Last up is the bottom of the UI. Now here you'll see two circles that display a percentage. Now this indicates how much of the surface area your scrapers are currently in contact with that contains scrapable material. The higher the percentage of valid material, the more material you will scrape from that hull, resulting in directly determining the amount of boxes from said wreck. You'll also see arrows that dictate if your salvage beams are currently set to spread in the vertical or horizontal directions. Now it's also important we actually talk about the different scraper modules currently in game as of 3.18. Both the Vulture and Reclaimer share one scraper module type, while each also has a distinct additional module. The Vulture has access to the Cinch and Abrade scraper modules. The Cinch is a tight beam that operates at a quicker salvage speed and yields more RMC per area scrape. The Abrade is a much wider beam, more than two times the Cinch, that operates at a much slower salvage rate and yields less RMC per area scrape. Now, while it would appear that you are salvaging faster on the abrade module with how quickly you clear the hull of material due to the wider diameter, you actually get substantially less material from this module. The reclaimer, on the other hand, has the abrade and trawler modules. The abrade is nearly the same thing that we just described on the vulture, wide beam and slow salvage speed, but the higher yield this time around. The trawler module, on the other hand, is an even wider beam with an even slower speed, but only takes a small hit on efficiency. Now, while some of these modules, such as the Cinch and Trawler, likely yield the best overall results, 
a lot of this also comes down to practical use. If you're haul stripping near a Lagrange point, a hotbed for piracy, versus the safety of an asteroid belt, then your goal should be speed and not to sit in one place for too long. If you have the comfort of safety, then maybe the module that gives you more but takes longer is your best bet. It's really up to you to decide. Now let's jump over to hand salvage and repair. And honestly, this section is going to be quick. Let's just get this out of the way. This method is not profitable whatsoever. One single SRT canister sells for only 192 Alpha UEC at the Trade and Development Division. If you're going to do hull scraping with the intention to make money, you'll need to utilize one of the ship methods. In order to engage with hand salvage and repair, you'll need that multi-tool with the SRT attachment, as well as a backpack to store SRT canisters. Once you have that all sorted out, you'll simply approach a ship's hull, make sure your attachment is toggled to salvage, ensure a SRT canister is loaded, and begin stripping the hull in very small amounts. This will generate RMC into that equipped SRT canister, which you could then store in your backpack to use for later repairs. In order to repair with this attachment, ensure that you have a full SRT canister equipped and toggle your tool to repair mode with the B key. Identify a part of your ship missing hull plating and begin to patch it up. Now you may struggle to get some parts to keep patching it, so make sure that you look all around that section, especially if it's a wing, to ensure missing material from the underside isn't actually preventing you from repairing on the top side. It's actually pretty simple once you get used to the few nuances. Now it's also important to note, repairs can only fix holes or patch up damage in an existing part of your ship's hull. You can't replace missing parts of your ship with this tool, and will still need to seek out a landing pad for that service. Now again, this isn't a way to really make money, but once Pyro and other subsequent systems make their way into the game, being able to repair your own ship in a place that very few repair stations exist will be incredibly invaluable. And players might actually offer money for your services. Just a little thing to keep in mind. Last up, and probably one of the most important things to talk about, is where in the verse do you sell your RMC containers? The simple answer, any trade and development division terminal, or TDD for short, in any major city. Now on Crusader, you could find the TDD at Orison on the Cloud View Center platform next to the hospital. On Hurston, head to Lorville's Central Business District and look for the Transfers Commodity Exchange. On Microtech, you could find the TDD at New Babbage in the Plaza, a subsection of the Commons. And finally, on ArcCorp at Area 18, head to the TDD in ArcCorp Plaza. Now at the time of this recording and likely to change over the course of development, RMC sells for 7.6K AUEC per one SCU. Now the Vulture nets you around 100K in profit, while the Reclaimer nets far more, roughly 2.3 million for a full load. But it has to be split amongst three to four, sometimes five crew members. Now, if by some chance you end up with salvage that isn't yours to begin with, your options drop down to one type of location. The no questions asked terminals, a prime example being the one at Grim Hex. Keep in mind, you will get a reduced payout from these locations as usual. It's the wonderful price of piracy. There you have it. Everything that you need to know to get started with salvaging in Star Citizen. It may not be the sexiest work, but salvaging is a wildly satisfying process that will only become more relevant as Star Citizen continues to develop the salvaging profession. Along the way, you better believe that Legacy Gaming will be there with new videos covering some of the latest developments. We like to take our time here with our content before releasing it to ensure it is as complete as possible. There's already a few videos released on the channel that I genuinely think you'll enjoy. If Star Citizen is your game, then how about you join our community on Discord? We'll be forming an organization over the next few months, so if you want to explore the verse with some awesome, relaxed people, check out the link in the description below. I want to thank you all for dropping by and giving this video a watch. If you enjoyed our content and you found it useful, please do me a favor and share it around. Otherwise, a like, comment, or even subscribing goes a long way to helping us out. My name is Livid, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the verse.